journalist Trump had his security kick out from that press conference was Jorge Ramos, one of the most prominent Latino journalists in the country. Now, Ramos has conducted extended interviews with George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. Jorge Ramos is a huge deal. But Donald Trump wanted nothing to do with him. Ramos repeatedly and publicly asked Trump to sit for an interview, and Trump not only declined, but he posted a photo online of a letter Ramos had sent him claiming that Ramos and his employer Univision were begging, begging him for an interview. Trump's relationship to Ramos and Univision stayed icy throughout his presidency. In 2020, the Trump campaign even put out this press release titled Univision is not a news network. It is a leftist propaganda machine and a mouthpiece of the Democrat Party. And that history is why it was so shocking last week when Univision had an hour-long interview with Donald Trump in which he was thrown softball questions like this one. Talking about polls, the New York Times Siena poll came out this week. It has you with a solid lead in five of the six states that could decide the election, but it also has you with 42 percent of uh, Latino voters support. That's yeah. unprecedented for a Republican candidate. What do you think the, the, the message voters are sending with these numbers? Now, the only thing weirder than asking, why are you doing so well with Latino voters, is probably Trump's response to that question. Well, the Latino vote is so incredible because they're unbelievable people. They have uh, incredible skills, incredible energy, and they're very entrepreneurial. All you have to do is look at the owners of Univision. Um, they're unbelievable entrepreneurial people, and they like me. Trump's praise of Univision and its owners was strange. But as more reporting has come out about this interview, things have gotten even stranger. Last week, Semaphore reported that three top executives at Univision and its new parent company, Televisa, were in the room during that interview with Trump. Now, that is not entirely crazy on its own. Sometimes executives just show up when high-profile interviews are happening. But this week, The Washington Post reports that that wasn't the only strange thing about that interview with Trump. According to The Post, Univision canceled a booking with President Biden's Hispanic media director, Maca Cascado, who is scheduled to respond to the Trump interview after it aired. And maybe most significantly of all, Univision canceled ads that had already been purchased by the Biden campaign and scheduled to run during the Trump interview. Univision told The Washington Post that its decision not to run those Biden ads came from an unannounced policy about opposition advertising in single candidate interviews and that there would be no Trump advertising allowed if President Biden gave Univision an interview. So far, there is no planned interview with President Biden. And all week, we have been getting alarming stories alleging that Univision has been making editorial and business decisions that seem to directly benefit Donald Trump. And then tonight, just a few hours ago, one of the network's most prominent anchors, Leon Krause, announced that he has left the network. Now, we should say that Krause has not yet announced why he has left Univision, but the timing here, just a day after the Post's reporting about Univision shifting its approach to Donald Trump, that timing raises some questions. Because beyond the ethics questions on the table here, Univision's audience matters a lot politically. Last year, Univision had the seventh biggest network audience in all of TV. It is the most watched Spanish language network in the United States. Univision is the channel of choice for a key demographic in this country and one that seems increasingly up for grabs in the next election. If its executives really are shifting the network's approach to covering Trump, asking softball questions, not pushing back on Trump's lies, that could have a real impact on the 2024 election. And Univision isn't the only media company that appears to be softening its approach to Donald Trump. Today, The Wall Street Journal reports that Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Threads, and Instagram, quietly changed its policy to allow ads that claim past elections were stolen. And that means that the Trump campaign can and is running ads that say things like this. We won in 2016. We had a rigged election in 2020, but got more votes than any sitting president. That 
ran as part of an ad on Facebook in August. Meta's old policy didn't allow ads that claim voter fraud is widespread and or alters the outcome of elections. Its new policy states that the platform doesn't allow ads that call into question the legitimacy of an upcoming or ongoing election. But past elections are apparently fair game. This follows YouTube in June announcing that it has similarly stopped removing claims of widespread fraud in the 2020 election. So, you know, feel free to erode public faith in America's democracy as long as you're using examples from the past. It's unclear why a company like Meta believes that Trump's false claim about the 2020 election being stolen is all about the past, because quite clearly that big lie is laying the groundwork for the next election in 2024. Here is Donald Trump yet again stoking fears about election fraud in another ad, one that is still live right now on Instagram. But it may also be the last election we ever have. If this election doesn't work, if this election is rigged and stolen, if bad things happen, our country will not survive. We will have become a dictatorship where your president is chosen for you. You will no longer have a vote or certainly won't have a meaningful vote. And you could say, frankly, that that has already begun. Joining me now is Michael Scherer, a national political reporter covering campaigns, Congress and the White House for The Washington Post. He is bylined on this story about Univision. Michael, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. There are a lot of questions I have about the, the sort of relationship that has developed between Donald Trump and the owners of arguably the most important Spanish language channel in the United States. Can you talk a little bit more about your reporting? Yeah, there were a number of unusual things. You've mentioned a couple of them. Another one uh, th that you didn't mention was that Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, who has not really been involved this time in uh, former President Trump's campaign, unlike his two previous runs, did kind of intervene with the campaign this time, according to our reporting, surprising some people inside the campaign to help set up this interview. And that's notable because during the Trump administration, one of the executives who was there when uh, former President Trump praised them uh, at Mar-a-Lago was a guy named Bernardo Gomez, who is uh, a senior executive of Televisa in Mexico City, who actually hosted a dinner between Jared Kushner and uh, uh, the Mexican president during the Trump administration. Televisa, I mean, a lot of the concern about this is that Televisa has a long reputation in Mexico, dating back decades, of being very friendly with whoever's in power in that country. And Univision, when it was established in the United States, very intentionally uh, defined itself against that. It, it tried to set itself up as an American-style news network that was going to talk truth to power, that was going to be more aggressive. And for years, there's been this sort of give and take with Televisa. A lot of the programming on Univision is Televisa's uh, telenovelas, which are very popular. But the, but the actual corporate control was not uh, overseen by Televisa until relatively recently when essentially the two companies merged. And now you have this blending, which has caused significant consternation in the Univision newsroom uh, in Miami. I got to ask about the Biden ads that were polled. Yeah. Um, conveniently for Donald Trump, inconveniently for President Biden. Um, is there further detail on whether there's going to be a Biden sit down, whether that was part of Donald Trump's ask in order to give Univision the sit down interview with him? We don't know why the ads were pulled. Uh, we do know that th th from from Univision, they said it wasn't the newsroom that made that decision. It was a corporate decision from above them. Uh, presumably, somebody didn't like the look of uh, of an ad running like that. It is typical uh, to have opposition ads run, like during a presidential debate, you'll have a Democratic ad run during a Republican debate. But Univision set its standard here. What is interesting, I mean, it's worth noting that this wasn't just a normal interview. They, they took out the 10 p.m. hour last Thursday, which is their highest rated hour. It's an hour for telenovelas. They, they, they promoted this interview all that day. They did behind the scenes the next day. Um, this was a this was sort of like a network special. It was like a special event. And it was happening for Donald Trump, who's a leading Republican candidate, but is not the Republican nominee for president right now. Now, they have said Univision has said they've made a number of requests to speak with uh, uh, President Biden. Uh, the, the Biden campaign said they had not received a request 
uh, as uh, until after that interview, the campaign itself, and that no no request mentioned an hour long sit down. I think that's another shoe that's going to drop. How the Biden campaign and Univision figure out how to move forward from this point, because there, there's clearly a lot of a lot of a lot of anger on the Biden side. Right. Anger that is, is complicating, given the fact that Biden still very much needs to speak to Univision's audience. Michael Scherer, great, great reporting. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you.